What's up, Covalence friends? Today, we're going to be getting started with SQLize, which is an NPM package for connecting to and querying different types of databases. We're gonna be using it with Postgres and piggybacking off a previous video where we actually hooked up a Postgres database to a Heroku um, app instance. So if you haven't seen that, it's linked in the description below. And if you haven't checked out our merch store, it's also linked in the description below. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our Express template. Uh, the link to this repo is in the description below, but if you wanted to use your own Express template or not even use Express, uh, this will work fine without Express. Um, but we're going to use it for simplicity's sake and to speed things up a little bit. So let's go ahead. We're going to open up a new terminal here and we're going to install the packages that we need, right? So we're going to npm i dash dash save. And since we're using Postgres, we're going to do pg pg h store. Uh, I think it's H store. There we go. And then SQLize. Okay. And then we're going to npm i dash dash save dev. Whoa, that was dash 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 save dev. And it's going to be the SQLize CLI. All right. So now we have, you know, everything we need to get started. Um, the, uh, if you've never been to the SQLize website. They have a pretty good website. Their documentation isn't my favorite, to be honest, um, but they have a pretty good getting started guide here. And obviously, you know, we're using Postgres, so we went down this route, but if you needed to use it for a different type of database, um, you know, they work with all the different drivers. So I think by default, they use actually MySQL. So we're gonna have to change up a few things uh, when we initialize everything. But um, if you want more info on the SQLize CLI, it's actually under other topics, migrations. There might be another place, but this is the only place I found it. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, obviously the SQLize command line interface. And, um, you know, this is something we just did. And then we're about to get into some project bootstrapping. It kind of goes into the configuration file and then also creating your first model and migration, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, but let's go ahead and they tend to, to like tell you to do things at the root of the project, but I personally like to create a new folder. So I'll create a new folder called SQLize and then I will, you know, change directly directory into that. And then in here is where I'll do my SQLize CLI and it. All right. So then inside this folder, we have our config. We have um, no migrations yet, but we do have an index.js file for the models. And then we have no seeders either. So it created those folders for us and it also created these two files. Um, and so if we go into our config.json, uh, we can see that it has essentially a, um, an object for each of our environments, right? So we have development, test, and production. Now, the problem with this is that in reality, you're probably going to want to use for production an environment variable, right? So if we go to, even if we go to our little Heroku instance here, um, we can see that under resources, you know, we have our database uh, and then under settings, you know, if we reveal our config var, it gave us this database URL, right? So this is actually the URL we're going to be using to connect. And so with SQLize. So I personally like to change this up and make this a JavaScript file. And then obviously we have some issues here. So what this is going to change to is it's going to be, oops, need to go back, the module.exports equals. And then we basically already have our JavaScript file, right? Now I'm not a big fan of how this looks. So let's just go ahead and we're going to get rid of all of these little double quotes. Um, let me zoom back in now. And we're not going to be using MySQL. We're going to be using Postgres. And we're not going to be using any of these properties either. We're going to use the URL property, right? So we're going to grab that URL real quick, real quick. So we're going to grab this and then we're just going to post it right in here, right? So um, don't worry about copying this down, guys. I'm going to delete this database. So you won't even be able to access it. It won't exist. But you're going to need to use your URL for your database here uh, for, you know, for this. Um, we can obviously just kind of copy these in here. We can still use this. Why not? We'll just leave this in here. If you want to use a local Postgres database um, and then for production, what we'll do is we'll remove this and then we'll just say that this is process.env.database 
the URL, similar to how we'd actually have it in production, right? So now we have our config file set up. Um, if we go into our models index.js file here, uh, you can see that this is basically just a, um, a setup file, right? So this allows us to, they go through the folder models and they just place each of the models that we're gonna add uh, onto this DB object and then they set the default export equal to DB, right? So then uh, it also grabs SQLize, which is lowercase SQLize is gonna be our actual um, instance of SQLize and then uppercase SQLize is the constructor itself, right? Or the default export of the package itself. Um, but you can see that it's actually requiring the JSON file still. So we actually have to change that. Um, by default, we're gonna be using development, which is fine. And then this has to be different as well because we're actually going to um, kind of do something a little bit different here, right? And so basically let's just define um, our lowercase sequelize as a constant and it's gonna be a new capital sequelize. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in our URL and then our config. And now the URL is just going to be, um, it's gonna be config.url. Uh, but then we're also gonna need to add an SSL mode to this for um, the Postgres. And for right now, you could get into uh, making this work with SSL, but we're not gonna worry about SSL for this demo. So we're just gonna say no verify, right? So again, we have SSL mode here. Um, we could add dialect options to this as well. So just so, you know, for your own edification, um, these all would include, you could do a dialect options and this would be a object like this and then you can do SSL here right and then um, a lot of people would do this whole reject unauthorized ordeal um, we don't necessarily need this but some versions will allow you to just do this and then use it with SSL mode but again uh, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll add it you know in production you might require SSL but for how we're doing this, you don't even need this stuff. So um, honestly, this is not super important. Um, but again, just so you know that it does exist, there are dialect options in here and you can use them and make it work as well. So we're going to use this SSL mode, no verify that we're gonna put right into the URL. We're gonna pass this URL up and hopefully properly connect to this database, right? So now we, what we need to do is we actually need to create our first model. We're gonna NPX, SQLize CLI model generate and then the argument is dash dash name and we're going to call it user and then we do dash dash attributes and we're going to do first name string last name I'm using all snake case too uh, with underscores you don't need to do that um, but you know it's not terrible you can actually add ID in here too which I don't mind doing, um, you know, ID number, um, first name string, last name string, and then let's just do email string. So we're gonna click enter and it creates our user.js file here. And then it also creates a migration as well. Now, if we go into this user.js file here, what we can see is that it creates this class and you can actually convert all of this uh, to work with TypeScript. If we could change this to a TS file and we could just start kind of migrating everything over to TypeScript, um, we're not gonna worry about it too much. Right now, we might create a separate video for that. Um, I like commas. And then since our ID is actually a primary key, we do have to change this into an object. So it's gonna be a type. And then what we do is we just say primary key true for this. And then we have our first name, last name, email. And then the last thing that we can actually add to this, which I personally like to do, is I will set an underscored property in the options here. So you say underscored true. And what that does is it just kind of notes that you're gonna be using underscores and not necessarily camel case. Um, I'm not a big fan of camel case with database objects. So again, that's kind of up to you how you wanna do it. But I typically like to use underscores um, and then here we have our migration itself, right? And so what the migration is, is it basically exports two functions. It ex exports an up function and a down function. And when we run this migration, 
Um, when we're actually running the migration, it runs the up function. If we redo or undo the migration, it runs the down function, right? And so what we can see here is that we wanna change these because they're camel case, right? So we set the underscore property and that's what the underscore property true kind of signals is this created at and updated at. Um, it'll actually help you define those a little bit better. Um, but again, we have our uh, allow no false, auto increment ID, primary key true, and we have our type integer. And so that corresponds here data types dot number, or we could have integer here. So um, actually let's keep this consistent. So we want to say integer and, oh, actually it created two IDs. So again, when you're doing the attributes, dash dash attributes do not include the ID. Otherwise you're going to be deleting that second one. So apologies there, remove the ID number. That's not good. It doesn't treat it as the primary key. Um, but I will say, if you don't put the ID in there, uh, it will not include it in the model. So it won't actually have it here. And so you'd have to add that separately. So again, um, if you wanna be able to like kind of access that ID and everything and have it referenceable, uh, I would just, you know, you could do it either way. You can add it after the fact, or you can put it in attributes and then delete it for the migration. Uh, there's probably a better way to do that, but again, there's kind of some fussing around that you have to do to make this work well. So again, I deleted the second ID that I created. Now we have the integer here. We have the integer here, all right? So everything kind of aligns and we are good to go now, all right? All right, so the way that we can actually run this migration is, um, and oh, just to kind of note, there's the static function associate as well. This is where all your foreign key associations and whatnot would go. Um, you know, the obviously the belongs to and the one to many, many to many relationships that you may have. Uh, we can get into that in a future video as well. But for right now, we're not going to deal with that because we only have one model. All right. So we're going to go ahead and NPX SQLize CLI DB migrate. And it grabs the config file. It looks at the development environment and then it calls the create user migration and so if we go into dbeaver right now we can open up our covalence progress postgres test we'll look at schemas we will look at our tables and we can see these two tables now right so we can look at users we can see that it created an id first name last name email created at and updated at so all of that looks good obviously we don't actually have any data in here so if we view data right? There's nothing in there, but it also created this SQLize meta table, right? And this is kind of the cool thing about SQLize is that it creates this table and then it keeps track of which migrations have run. So if you were to add, we'll go back to here. If you were to add more migrations, let's say you wanted to just add a column to user, right? You just wanted to add a column uh, phone number, right? You can add that column and it'll actually add to here and then you run db migrate again, it will not create another user table, right? It only runs the migrations that haven't run yet, which is extremely helpful, right? Because you're not double running migrations. Um, and then you can undo up to a certain migration as well. So you can go back to a certain migration and that will undo everything up to that point. And then you can kind of proceed from there. So the migrations are super helpful, helpful and they came up with a really clever way of just making this super convenient, right? So if you change databases, all you do is you just run db migrate, it runs all your migrations and all of a sudden your database is completely provisioned and set up the way you need it to, right? With all the correct tables, all the correct columns, everything along those lines, right? So uh, they really kind of came up with a great way of, um, you know, helping you migrate your stuff and you, you know, even migrating data in, in a sense, right? And so Cedars itself would kind of help you with a lot of that stuff. Um, I don't use Cedars very often. I kind of just use the API or I'll create an API to do a lot of that stuff. But with Cedars, you can actually add data and things like that. So um, we can look at the documentation for something like that. I'm not gonna worry about it right now because we're gonna get right into, in future videos as well, get right into just using the database, connecting to the database, and then just accessing information and storing it directly with the SQLize API uh, or the SQLize library itself. All right, so we have everything we need in the config, we have our migration set up, we have our user table set up, right? As we can see here, um, we have the migration done, we have our user table. So now the last thing we're gonna do in this particular video is just going to be, um, we're going to connect to the database and make sure that we can do that. So 
Let's go back. Oh, we don't need to be in the SQLize folder. And we can kind of see here, this is our index.ts. This is where we're running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just kind of create a self-executing um, async function here. And I'm also going to create a cons kind of connect DB. Uh, this is gonna be an async function. And what we're going to do in this is we're actually going to um, just kind of run the SQLize authenticate function. And so we need to actually import that object. So we saw that the models index.js put SQLize on the instance for SQLize, right? Uh, it puts it as little SQLize and it puts it on the default export. So what we're gonna do, since we haven't set everything up for TypeScript, we're just gonna require this, but we're gonna require SQLize slash models slash, uh, just SQLize slash models, right? Because it is the index.js in our models. And so it's going to grab the DB object, but we want the little SQLize there. So that should be good. And so in connect DB, what we can do is we can console.log and we're going to say checking database connection. Then we can do a little try catch block, right? And then if we catch an error, what we can just say for now is we can just console.log you know, database connection failed. Oops, and then we'll just log the error here and we'll just process that exit one because it was an error. And in here, what we'll do is we'll await SQLize.authenticate. And if that is successful, we'll console.log database connection established, period. All right, so now we have our database connection is established or established um, and we should be good, right? So uh, inside here, we will add the, um, you know, the app.listen, but at first what we'll do is we'll await the connect DB function. So we should get, you know, the checking database connection once we authenticate and connect. We will then attempt to run the actual server on the port and it should, if everything is done correctly, log everything we need. So we're gonna run npm run dev. It is going to compile everything, no errors, great. Checking database connection, it says executing, select one plus one as result. Database connection established, attempting to run. So now we're actually listening, right? So now we're ready to go ahead and start querying that database. And so that'll be a future video, so stay tuned. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it was pretty easy to understand. If you guys have any suggestions for future content, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep creating what we wanna create. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will see you soon.